By the way, Al has got one of the finest critiques on Brian McLaren's uh, Generous Orthodoxy, which I have downloaded before and used. Uh, you must follow up on that. There's another angle of this which uh, I, I will address, and that is that these emergent churches are going to produce a generation of people who actually will not be able to handle the challenge of Islam and other major world religions. They will not be able to handle it. And uh, my wife and I were having dinner with a very notable gentleman, I shall leave unnamed, but he was, um, he says he communicates to more people across television than anybody else in the world at any, on any given day. And uh, I won't say too much more, but he was sitting across the table and he said he'd just been talking to a Muslim scholar and came away quite impressed with the fact that he had not known that there was really not that much of difference between Islam and Christianity. So. Here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the one God? Well, I believe, Oprah, that there, I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. Jesus can reveal himself to anybody. My wife and I were having dinner with him, and my wife is very, very well controlled in her expressions. And I thought she was going to choke at that moment. I had to just... <laughs> Uh, turn over to her and calm her down. Uh, I said, uh, why did you say that? He said, well, you know, he talked about all the points of agreement we have and so on. I said, well, let's go from here. They don't believe we have the Bible, that the New Testament is lost. They don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. They don't believe he died on the cross. They don't believe he rose again from the dead. They don't believe he's coming again as king. Do you think there's a difference between what they believe and what we do? I said, they don't have the gospel. But you know, this is the problem. The Muslims have shown us up. We don't know what we believe. When they present their ideas to an average young Christian going to a, one, of the, one of these emergent churches, one of the most prominent of those churches draws about 20,000 on Sunday. You can read his book. In that entire book of having a better life now and best life now and so on, there is not one mention of the cross in it. There, there is no gospel there. And so, you know, along with all the other compromises, we're going to be shown up. And the whole idea of RC here, you can't show a counterfeit if you do not know what the genuine is. And I think that's a big price we are going to pay very dearly as a result of this kind of lack of proper teaching. Just recently, Ravi, uh, I saw a television preacher uh, whose name I won't mention to protect the guilty. <clears throat> <laughs> he made this statement, and I, it takes a lot to shock me in this day and age, but he said, I don't care who you are, what you have done, or who you have done it with, God is not angry at you. Oh. And what does that have to do with, with the New Testament view of, of God, of sin, of the cross? I mean, why would anybody need to, to come to Christ mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. God's mm -hmm. not angry? and where the gospel talks to us about being saved from the wrath that is to come. Mm -hmm. But we don't believe in the wrath of God anymore. That's, that's, uh, that's something that has to go. It's incompatible with postmodern thinking. Mm -hmm. Very sad.